now let us talk about the heart so in this image you see the heart this is the arch of aorta and this vessel is the main pulmonary artery and you see here this one this is the left lower pulmonary artery and this is the right lower pulmonary artery and this is left upper pulmonary artery these are the branches of main pulmonary artery now this portion is called hilum so there are two hyla one on each side that is one on the left side and one on the right side if i show it here this is the main pulmonary artery and this main pulmonary artery divides into left pulmonary artery and right pulmonary artery now you might think that why it is blue the reason is because it carries the deoxygenated blood and these are pulmonary veins these are red because they carry oxygenated blood from the lungs so it is this area which i said is the is called hilum of the left side and this is the hilum of the right side and hila contains the blood vessels as well as the bronchi the right the left main bronchus and the right main bronchus and it also contains the lymph nodes nerves that enter and leave the lungs so this is something about the background knowledge now if you see on the x ray the position of the heart then we see it is in the middle between the two lungs resting on the diaphragm and the right border of the heart is formed by the right right atrium inferior vena cava and superior vena cava and left border of the heart is formed by the left ventricle as well as main pulmonary artery and aortic knuckle and if you see between the aortic knuckle and the pulmonary artery main pulmonary artery there is an area as i said already that this area is called as aorto pulmonary window now for practical purposes we take right side of the heart as right atrium and left side of the heart as left ventricle now if we look at this image this is the aortic knuckle and this is the pulmonary artery here you can see the pulmonary artery one goes down 
to the lower lobe the other goes to the upper lobe similarly here it goes up and it goes down so it forms a v shape you can see this is the v shape right and this is the hyla or hilum of the left lung and hilum of the right lung and on the lateral side you can see this is the heart on the lateral side this is the left ventricle this is the right ventricle this is the arch of aorta and then this is the descending aorta so descending aorta goes in front of the spine this is the spine you can see the intervertebral spaces here so in front of this is coursing the descending aorta so if if i see here so this is the heart as i said and this is the left ventricle this is the right ventricle this one the left ventricle and this one the right ventricle now again as is on the on the lateral view of the x ray this is the shadow of the heart so this will this is the left ventricle this is the right ventricle and if you see this shadow also from here goes like this 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 it arches and then goes downwards you can see this is the shadow which is in front of the spine and this shadow is arch of aorta and this is descending aorta that is how we see the shadow of the heart on the lateral view and here this is the pulmonary artery you now here also this is the shadow of the heart this will form the left ventricle this will form the right ventricle and this is the right dome of diaphragm why i say it is right dome of diaphragm because it is taller than the left diaphragm so this is another shadow this is of left diaphragm this is of right diaphragm and if you see the shadow here it is coming like this shadow here this shadow is the descending aorta which is in front of the spine this is the spine these are the intervertebral discs so this is the position of the heart on the lateral view of the x ray sorry the lateral view of the radiograph so we can see again here shadow of the heart this is the right diaphragm because, because it is taller than the left diaphragm this is the spine very clearly seen and this is the arch of aorta you can see here then it goes down 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 like this this shadow so this shadow is the descending aorta which we see on the lateral view of the radiograph now let us talk about the position shape borders and size of the heart so the position of the heart is that it is two thirds on the left side so if you draw a mid if you draw a line in the center of the spine like this vertical line and from the from this uh mid line in the spine and if you if you if you measure the distance from here to the maximum distance of the heart so this will form the lateral two thirds of the heart and if you measure from the from this point to the maximum distance of the right atrium this forms the one third of the heart 
Now suppose if we measure and we find that this lateral two thirds is eight centimeters, and the the uh, on the right side the one third is four centimeters, then you add eight plus four is equal to twelve, and divided by by the distance across the chest wall. So you take the maximum distance across the chest wall horizontally like this so for example if it measures 24 centimeters then 12 centimeters divided by 24 is 1 by 2 so that means it is 50 percent the the cardiothoracic ratio is 50 percent it is within normal limits so normally the cardiothoracic ratio should be less than 50 percent and we see here that it is 50 percent here so it is within normal limits now we see that two-thirds of the two-thirds of the heart is on the left side and one third of the heart is on the right side and we find this in 88 percent of the cases or sometimes we may find that half is on the left side and half is on the right side that is seen in seven percent of the cases and sometimes the left is greater than than two thirds from the middle of the spine, but then it will be only in 4.8 percent of the cases. Or sometimes the right uh, right side is greater than the than the left from the spine. Then we see it only in 0.2 percent of the cases. But for practical purposes, and usually and often, we see that heart is two thirds on the left side and one third on the right side. So I have shown you here the measurement uh, by which we can calculate cardiothoracic ratio. Now, in this image, also or in this radiograph also we take the midline vertically in the spine then we measure the maximum distance uh, from the right border of the heart we also measure the maximum distance from the from the left border of the heart we add these two and then we take the transverse diameter at maximum distance across the chest wall and we divide this distance by this distance if it is less than 50 percent it is normal if it is more than 50 percent then it, we say that heart is enlarged now i want to ask you here one question will you measure this way or will you measure this way now here also if we take the maximum distance of the heart that is this point to this point and we take the maximum distance across the chest wall and we find that this this is uh, the cardiothoracic ratio is more than 50 percent then we say heart is enlarged so this distance divided by distance across the chest wall if it is more than 50 percent we say there is cardiomegaly now my question is should we measure like this or we should measure like this please remember you should always measure like this why because you have to see that whether the right side of the heart is one third or it is more than one third that can only be uh, judged if we do the measurements as shown in this image right
I hope that you will remember it throughout your life. Because some of the books show measurements like this. So much better is if you measure uh, like this, then it will give you the the size of the right border as well the the size of the right side of the heart as well as the left side of the heart. Now, as I said in the previous image, that the borders of the heart is superior vena cava, right atrium, and inferior vena cava on the right side, and on the left side it is it is the aortic knuckle, it is the pulmonary main pulmonary artery or trunk, it is the left atrium and the left ventricle. But practically, we when we have to talk about the right border of the heart we only speak about the right atrium and if we have to speak about the left border of the heart we speak only about the left ventricle now size of the heart as i said that cardiothoracic ratio should be less than 50 percent i have shown you how to measure that now the the other uh, other finding is that if you find that transverse diameter heart is less than 15.5 centimeters, then it is normal. Now, I give you here example. Suppose you take two x-rays. So, in one x-ray, you find that the, the cardiothoracic ratio is, is, for example, 50 percent. And after two months or three three months you take another x-ray and you find that it is slightly the cardiothoracic ratio is slightly more then will you call it as cardiac enlargement or not you can only call call it as a cardiac enlargement if you find that the difference between the two x-rays is more than 1.5 centimeters so if heart is enlarged more than 1.5 centimeters after you take the measurement of the previous x-ray and the next x-ray then only you can say that there is cardiac enlargement but if you see that it is a little di difference it is not 1.5 centimeters it is less than 1.5 centimeters then you will say that the two x-rays as far as heart is concerned are identical i hope you got this point and i think i don't have to repeat it now shape of the heart the shape of the heart can be pen pendular or tubular as in emphysema it can be boot shaped in palate stratology or there can be straightening of the left border which is also called as mitralization that happens in mitral stenosis. Now you see the different shapes of the heart. This is called water bottle, pear shaped or globular appearance. So you can see here there is a cardiomegaly, but it is a water bottle or pear shaped appearance. This is usually found in cardiomyopathies or pericardial effusion. So you can also see here the the water bottle appearance or globular appearance there is cardiomegaly and this is typical of pericardial effusion or cardiomyopathy that is dilated heart dilated cardiomyopathy or you may find that heart is like a boot boot shape so if you see here the heart appears like a boot shaped if you see here it appears like the shoe or like the boot right and this appearance is seen in fallot stetrology which is a cyanotic congenital heart disease or you may find that heart heart is seen as a tubular shape or it is narrowed, the heart is narrowed 
and this can happen when there is emphysema. So why I say that you see here, this is the, the, the lungs are hyperinflated. There is widening of the intercostal spaces and there is flattening of the diaphragm. So this is an this is a card this is a this is a radiograph of you may you, emphysema right and in emphysema you will find a tubular heart now let us talk about the hilum so the hilum of the lung is the area in the central portion of medial aspect of each lung so medial aspect of each lung uh, there is an area in the central portion which is called as hilum the this is the area where the bronchi arteries veins nerves enter and exit the lungs as i have shown in the previous radiograph and the hilum hilum of the left as well as right is usually positioned at the level of T6 and T7 intervertebral space. Now, if you if you look here, you find it is it is like a V shape. So it is the it is the pulmonary artery going to the upper lobe, pulmonary artery going to the lower lobe. Here also it is V shape. The pulmonary artery going up and pulmonary artery going down right these are the branches of the main pulmonary artery so it the the hyla hilum of the right as well as left are like v shape as i said that hilum is made up of pulmonary artery pulmonary veins and bronchi the the left hilum is usually higher and it is 0.5 to 2 centimeters higher than the than the right hilum and is v shaped you can see here the v shape so here also you can see the v shape it, the one is going up and this is going down like this and you must remember that if you find that the right hilum is higher than the left hilum then it is definitely pathological now what is the size of the hilum the size of the hilum on the right side and left side are equal so they are equal in size in 84 percent of the cases or sometimes the right hilum is larger than the left hilum in 8% of the cases and sometimes left hilum is larger than the right hilum in 8% of the cases but in majority or in 84% of the cases the right hilum and left hilum are equal equal in size so we can see here this is the right hilum you can see the opacity here which is going downwards which is the right pulmonary right lower pulmonary artery and here this is the left upper pulmonary artery which is not clearly seen this is the this is the right lower pulmonary artery you can see here and this is the left hilum so you can see the opacity here and how to measure you see one one important point is that you should take the midpoint the midpoint of the v shape so if i take the midpoint of v shape of the left hilum and i take the midpoint of of the v shape of the right hilum then these will be the these will be the points uh, from where you can measure whether the hilum is 
higher or lower in level to one another. Now you take the, for example, right here, this is the right hilum. So this is the line here. When we draw a line like this, and this is the left hilum, this is the midpoint. And we'll, when we draw a line this, we find that left hilum is higher than the right. And it should be, as I said, it should be 0 0.5 to 2 centimeters hi higher. The left should be 0 0.5 to 2 centimeters higher than the right hilum. Is that clear? Okay. Now, I show here one image. The only thing in this image I want to lay stress that this is the tracheobronchial area. So, this is trachea and this is bronchi. This is tracheobronchial area. So, at the tracheobronchial area, you find a opacity here. You understand my point when you, when you look uh, x-rays. So, it may not be seen in all the x-rays, but in, maybe in some x-rays, you may appreciate it. So this will be the azygos vein. So this is the place where you can, where you have to look for azygos vein. Now, what are the causes of enlarged hilum? You see, if you now see here, we can we can clearly see that hyla of left as well as right are enlarged. So they are enlarged. You can see it. And the causes for enlargement of the hyla are if the film is taken in expiration, if there is lymph adenopathy uh, due to various causes, or in cases of sarcoidosis, lymphoma, pulmonary hypertension, congenital heart diseases like, like patent ductus arteriosus, VSD, ASD, or in cases of tuberculosis and malignancy, the hyla may be enlarged. So either one hilum will, will be enlarged or both the hilum will be enlarging, enlarged depending upon the severity of the disease. Now if you see here that we see that hyla are both sides enlarged. You can see here there is enlargement of hyla, there is enlargement of the left hilum. And if you see here, there is enlarged hilum on the right side. So I already mentioned what could be the causes of enlargement of hilum. So the x-ray is only a guide. It is not a definite diagnosis. So you have to take the history into consideration. You have to take examination into consideration. Then based on history and examination, you can think what could be the possibility of this enlargement of the hyla, right? And one more point I want to I want to tell it here that if you have to look for aortic enlargement, then again you draw the midline through the spine, then from from this uh, midpoint to the maximum distance of the aortic knuckle, right? And if you find it is greater than 3 centimeters, then there is aortic enlargement. So you can, on PA view of the radiograph of chest, you can, you can easily measure whether there is any aortic enlargement or not. So if you see here that both the hyla are enlarged, right? So there is... Uh, and there is also the enlargement of the pulmonary artery. Why I say pulmonary artery? Because if you see, it's very smooth here. Right? So here we see that pulmonary artery is enla enlarged, right? Which could, which could be the cause of hilar enlargement. And you also find out, if you look here, you see these are the pulmonary vasculature, right? But if you see, go to the periphery, you don't, you don't find the pulmonary vasculature as prominent as you find in the central portion. So in central portions, the pulmonary vasculature is more prominent. So you can see it is, it is more prominent in the central areas 
and it is less prominent or smaller in the periphery. So here you don't see, you find it very, very small as compared to the central portions. So we call it as there is, a, it appears as if there is a cutoff uh, towards the periphery of this vasculature. So this is also called as pruning, peripheral pruning. So you can see here the peripheral pruning and you can see here the peripheral pruning. You can also see here there is a peripheral pruning. The, the, the vasculature here appears very, very thin compared to the prominent vasculature towards the central portions. Now, now, talking about the mediastinal widening, the, the, if to, to speak about the mediastinal widening, we have to measure at the level of aortic arch as shown in this image. And if you find that, that the mediastinum at the level of aortic arch is more than 8 centimeters, then we say there is mediastinal widening, right? So you measure measure across the across the arch of aorta, right? This is the point where where you have to measure the mediastinum, and if it is more than eight centimeters, then we call it as mediastinal enlargement or mediastinal widening. So you can see here the the when when we measure from this point to this point, right? So it is more than it is around eleven point five centimeters. So it is more than eight centimeters. So we can say that here the mediastinum is enlarged. So if you measure here, so this is the aortic knuckle right or this is the aortic arch so you measure from this point to this point and see how much is the distance if distance is more than eight centimeters then only we say there is mediastinal widening now here we can see that there is mediastinal widening so this is the aortic arch so you measure it from here to here Right, so it appears it is more than eight centimeters. Then we label it as mediastinal widening. I think this point is clear. Now, last of all, let us talk about the lungs. So, in systematic approach to chest X-rays, we talk of lungs only last of all. Please. Noted that lungs should be talked about last of all in systematic approach of reading the x ray of chest. Now, if I show the image here of lungs, this is here the right upper lobe, this is left upper lobe. This is the oblique fissure here, which divides the upper lobe and lower lobe. There is also a horizontal fissure like this, and this is the middle lobe. So the right lung has got two fissures, the oblique fissure and horizontal fissure, dividing the lung into right upper lobe, middle lobe and right lower lobe. While as in left lung, there is only one oblique fissure. You can see it here, which divides the lung into left upper lobe and left lower lobe. 
and there is also a protruded part just like a tongue here in the lower part of the upper lobe since it resembles like a tongue so this part is called the lingula so lingula is the lower part of the left upper lobe you can also appreciate here that the lingula touches the left border of the heart or it touches the left ventricle the middle lobe touches the right side of the heart that is right atrium and lower lobe left lower lobe touches the diaphragm as well as right lower lobe touches the diaphragm now let me show it here this is the this is the heart the left ventricle and left the 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 lingula this is the lower part of the left upper lobe which is a tongue shaped and this is called the lingula and this lingula touches the left border of heart as you can see it here and here the middle lobe you can see here the middle lobe touching the right side of the heart or the right atrium so on x ray this portion is the middle lobe which touches the right atrium or right side right border of the heart and the lower lobe you can see here this is the lower lobe this is the lower lobe so lower, lower lobe touches the diaphragm right as well as left touching the diaphragm i think this is clear now so the the left hemidiaphragm is touched by the left lower lobe the right hemidiaphragm is touched by the right lower lobe and right atrium is touched by the middle lobe and left border that is left ventricle is touched by the lingula lingula of the upper lobe now let me talk about the superimposition of the lobes what does that mean now i give an example here now if we see this is the lateral view this is the lateral view of the right lung this is the right upper lobe this is the middle lobe and this is right lower lobe suppose when we take the x ray pa view the beam of x rays come from this side and if there is there is any consolidation collapse or malic or any tumor whatever may the, may be the cause it will show as an opacity the white opacity it will show on the x ray now suppose only the lower lobe is involved then we will, when we will see the x ray we will see that middle lobe also will not be seen it will also appear to be white why because this white portion or this consolidation or this opacity will overlap this portion this right middle lobe so you can see that depending upon the size of the uh, of the opacity due to various lesions so if the size is more then we won't be able to see the right middle lobe because this will overlap over the dark portion of the right middle lobe so this is because of superimposition so what i mean to say is that
this is the lower lobe here so on backwards the lower lobe see how much it extends up as well as lower touching the diaphragm so if there is opacity in the lower lobe then this middle lobe will also appear radio opaque i think that is correct as far as superimposition of lobes is concerned or if there is only middle lobe suppose this is the middle lobe if only middle lobe is involved then this will be totally dark because this is normal so at that time we will be only seeing the middle lobe as radio as radio opaque on the x ray and the rest of the lung will be dark due to air in the lungs now let me talk about the upper how how, how do how do we recognize the upper lobe middle lobe and lower lobe on the x ray now as i said this is the horizontal fissure and this is the oblique fissure so above the horizontal fissure right is the is the right upper lobe so it will be here if i if i if i draw a line here like this at this level so this will form the upper lobe so upper lobe will appear radio opaque meaning the upper lobe is involved the right border of heart as well as cardiophrenic and costophrenic angles will be dark due to the air in the lungs so this area will not get affected so i can show it here this is if radio opaque this is the this is the right upper lobe so you can see here the right atrium or the right border is free so we can say that middle lobe is not involved the cardiophrenic an angle especially the costophrenic angle is free so lower lobe is not involved if we see this upper lobe on the on the lateral view so you can see that above the heart will be the upper lobe right upper lobe this is how we recognize the right upper lobe on x ray or on radiograph now you can appreciate here if middle lobe gets involved by any lesion this is the middle lobe it gets involved by any lesion that means the as i said that the middle lobe touches the right border of the heart so this is the right border of the heart from here to here so if there is a middle lobe pathology here then this will appear as radio opaque so you can see here this is appearing radio opaque and the right border of the heart is becoming blurred so right border of the heart is not clearly seen meaning that the meaning that the right middle lobe pathology is there so we can say that in this x ray it seems there is a uh, right uh, middle lobe consolidation and on lateral view it will appear as wedge shaped so this is wedge shaped now it can be smaller or larger depending upon the size so this will be the area where you can see the right middle lobe on lateral view of the radiograph now here comes the here comes again the part played by the superimposition now suppose if the lower lobe is involved right suppose if horizontal if the horizontal uh, fissure was here in the image in this image now then whole this area will get radio opaque now actually we should have we should have since suppose the suppose the middle lobe is not involved but still we can see that there is a radio opacity from this line downwards if you take this horizontal line little above this is because of superimposition as i said now if this is the the, the upper the upper areas of the lungs is 
clear and it is dark due to the air so upper lobes are not involved and from the horizontal fissure down is radio opaque so it it doesn't mean that middle lobe is involved here because this is because of the superimposition so if this whole area from here to here lower lobe gets uh, becomes radio opaque due to various pathologies then this radio opacity will overlap this area so this area will also appear white so we can get the whole from this line horizontal fissure downwards we can see that this might be this might become radio opaque right because you may raise here question sir if it is lower lobe then why we are not able to see the middle lobe you got you got the point now this will also depend upon the extent of the disease extent of the lesion right and most important thing in the lower lobe is that as i said that this lower lobe touches the diaphragm so we will not be able to see the diaphragm and costophrenic angle costophrenic angle is this one here so it will be obliterated so in lower lobe pathologies costophrenic angle obliterated right and diaphragm will be no, will not be clear so it will be merged with the with the opacity in the lower lobe so diaphragm will not be seen right i think this is clear and if we have to see it on the lateral view of the radiograph then this is behind the behind the spine or behind the heart right this is the oblique fissure so below the oblique fissure this whole part is the lower lobe so on lateral view you may not be able to see this area right the cardioprenic the the costophrenic area or cardioprenic area or this whole area may become radio opaque depending upon the size of the lesion so after this let us talk about the vascular markings so let us talk about the vascular markings now after 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 noting the different lobes of the lungs we talk about the vasculature or pulmonary vasculature or vascular markings now if you see here these are the vascular markings these small small linear striations you can see here these are called vascular markings because the pulmonary artery pulmonary veins which divide and redivide and divide and redivide so they form a they form the network of uh, vessels all around the the lung so these can be seen as vascular markings so in this you can see that the vascular markings are more prominent towards the center than towards the periphery but we do see here you can see these these small small uh, lines right are small uh, narrow uh, narrow linear opacities which we call we call them as vascular markings so you can see here this 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 line this line going up then this these line is going up this line this line so here the vascular markings are more prominent you can see here the, the, they are little little thicker right and we can say that hilum also is prominent because as i said that the hilum is made up of pulmonary vein pulmonary artery and right and left bronchi so when vessels are congested or vessels are enlarged then their vascular markings will also become prominent
So you can see here these situation see see the line is going up right you can see here these line is going up right going down right going like this you can see very clearly that small narrow narrow linear opacities are there these are called vascular markings and this will be as you already know now now this will be the lower uh low, lower pulmonary artery this is the this will be the upper pulmonary artery branches of main pulmonary artery here it, and it is slightly v-shaped here here also it is v-shaped this is the upper low pulmonary artery this is the lower low pulmonary artery you can see here and what you see here are the vascular markings so we can also see sometimes the horizontal linear opacities which 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 are from the periphery towards the center of the lungs but they only are up to few centimeters so these horizontal lines are called curly b lines so if you find there are horizontal lines uh, from the periphery towards the center running up to few centimeters then you can call them as curly b lines so you can see here this horizontal line which will be called as curly b line you can see here also horizontal lines which can be called as curly b lines So here it is clearly seen the horizontal line is like this, the parallel lines to the lungs running few centimeters from the periphery towards the center and they are called as curly B lines. While as curly A lines, they run obliquely upwards like this. They are not horizontal, they are slightly oblique, mostly seen in these regions. Right? So, this is normal. We don't see any oblique lines running obliquely upwards like this, right? Neither we see any parallel horizontal lines like this. So this is normal and this is the vasculature, normal vasculature what you see here, the vascular markings. But again, if you see here, this is the horizontal line, this is the horizontal line. So these are called curly B lines. And you can see here, you can appreciate here, the obliquely, the lines are going up. The vascular markings, linear opacities running obli obliquely upwards. So you can call them as curly A lines. So these curly B lines will be short and they will be up to 1 to 2 centimeter, mostly in the costophrenic angles you can see them. So you can see here as I said these are obliquely linear opacities, right, which we call them as curly A lines. So I think this is clear then we then we look at the costophrenic angles so these are the costophrenic angles here this is costophrenic angle this is cardiophrenic angle as already it has been said so this is the right, right diaphragm which is higher than the left diaphragm this is right uh, costophrenic angle this is left uh, costophrenic angle it should be very sharp so you can see it is sharp and smooth right so this is the normal uh, costophrenic angles then let me uh, let me tell it here that we also divide the divide the lungs into three zooms as far as x-ray is concerned 
but I have seen mostly the students when they talk about the examination of the chest, sometimes they say there the cryptation is in the upper zone, cryptation is in the middle zone. We don't say like that. That is, that is wrong. That should not be said like that. When it is examination, we refer uh, according to the landmark. So we should say, for example, infraclavicular, interscapular, infrascapular, scapular. Like that, we should speak if there are cryptations or there is any pathology. We should not speak as mid zone, uh, upper zone, the lower zone, because these, these, these zones are only divided for x ray and not for physical examination of the chest not for clinical examination of the chest. This is only meant for x-ray. Please remember it. Now the upper zone is that if we draw a, if we draw a horizontal line like this uh, at the end of, in, at the interior end of second rib. So this is first rib, this is second rib. So you draw a horizontal line like this at the end of at the anterior end of second rib so above this will be the upper lobe and if you draw another line below uh, below below at the end of uh, at the anterior end of fourth rib so this is anterior end of fourth rib so second rib then draw another line at the anterior end of fourth rib then 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 above the second rib will be the upper lobe between the second and fourth rib will be the will be sorry will be the upper zone and between the second and the fourth will be the middle zone and below the fourth right is the lower zone so this is how we should divide the divide the lungs on x-ray into different zones so you can see this is the upper zone so this line is at the end of uh, at the anterior end of second rib then this is the middle middle line this is at the anterior end of fourth rib so this will divide it into three parts so this will be the upper lobe between the second rib and the fourth rib will be middle lobe and below the anterior end of uh, fourth rib will be the lower lobe. I think this is clear. We can also divide the lung if we draw a vertical line at mid-clavicular line like this. Then we can say that this is the paracentral portion of the upper lobe. This is the peripheral portion of the upper lobe. This is the Paracentral or paracardic portion of the middle lobe. This is the peripheral portion of the middle zone. Sorry, the middle zone. And this is the this is the this is the again the cent lower central portion of the lower zone. This is the peripheral portion of the lower zone. So these zones can further be divided by 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 an imaginary vertical line running from mid clavicular line that divide, divides it into central parts and peripheral parts. So central part of the upper lobe, peripheral part of the, sorry, the central part of the upper zone, peripheral part of the upper zone, central part of the middle zone, peripheral part of the uh, middle zone, or central part of the lower zone and peripheral part of the lower zone. Similarly, we can uh, name them here also. So this was all about the lungs so with this i have completed the how i have completed the portion of the of the radiographs and we have come to know how to read the read the radiographs so so once once uh, this is uploaded then i will be uploading the uh, the i will be uploading the radiographs uh, uh, I will be uploading the abnormal radiographs and we will be discussing then the abnormal radiographs, how to make the, make the diagnosis or how to read the abnormal x-rays that will be, that will be talked about 
in part three, part four, and part five. I think uh, by 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 completing the part five, the the I think the almost all the X-rays of the chest will be dealt with. So I thank you all. You have been so <laughs> attentive, and please, whenever you want to refresh the knowledge, you can go through. You can go to the YouTube, and you can read uh, or you can just uh, refresh your knowledge by going through these presentations so i wish you all the best and god bless you but don't forget to subscribe this channel there is a subscription uh, button just below then please click it and then you will get all the notifications whenever i will be uploading the radiographs or when i will be uploading any presentation uh, on any topics then you will get the notification so i thank you and god bless you so once we have finished uh, looking looking the looking at at the lobes of lung and at the pulmonary vasculature now we should also look for any foreign bodies so if there are any foreign bodies in the chest like you can see here this is the pacemaker right and these are the these are the tubes right and uh, which appear maybe these are the these are the these are the these are the ecg leads right so you can very clearly see them these foreign bodies uh, over the x-rays so any foreign body in the trachea or in the mediastinum or in the chest can easily be detected on the x-ray 